conclude our journey together uh, today. I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I felt really, truly disappointed we couldn't physically be together. I was really looking forward to that, uh, although it is pretty warm and certainly the right call was made. And so at least it's good to be able to see everybody's unmasked face. And that's, that's, that's pretty good. So I'm, I'm grateful for that and grateful for all of you. Um, uh, I'll have more comments about our time together within the context of this sermon. Um, but uh, a few things I wanted to, uh, to mention up front. Um, uh, COVID-19 struck a little closer to home uh, this week. Uh, Kathy Rezac's dad uh, tested positive uh, for uh, COVID-19 and is definitely under the weather. So uh, Kathy and Ricky uh, have been tested and they're waiting results. So will be Monday or Tuesday uh, before they know. And uh, so uh, uh, Kathy was going to you know, serve with me today outside, but now that we're inside, uh, that might be happening. So uh, I just wanted to let you know that, and uh, you know, it, it strikes a little closer to home. And um, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, we don't have words to the music today. There were a few uh, glitches, mostly on my part on that. I, I own it. Um, one of the things we do uh, want to uh, reconfirm, however, is that when we worship uh, physically together, uh, it is truly best not to sing, even with, uh, even with masks on. Uh, so uh, as we move forward and thinking about safety issues, uh, let's try not to do that. Uh, we've been really good about everything, and we are really good, and we've been healthy. So, but uh, that's uh, something that unfortunately uh, is a kind of a temptation we should resist, I suppose. Um, I, I, uh, I wanted to, uh, as far as the, I, I'm going to be teaching on Acts this Wednesday at 7, and just a modification to that teaching, particularly for Jim Lehman's uh, notes, but anyone who's part of that class, we're going to go through chapters uh, 21 through 23. We're going to do a quick blast through those. It's all Jerusalem-based, and then you'll move into Caesarea the next week. And as I was looking at those chapters, it doesn't make sense to cut them that much. It's uh, uh, So I think we'll just kind of condense those uh, for purposes of, I think it'll be a probably a little more full-throated meeting that way. It's a little bit thin, just uh, ch chapter 21. Um, I will uh, be on board throughout this week and then take a uh, holiday the final week of uh, August, uh, but I am available. Feel free to call me. I'll also be making some goodbye calls as well, uh, particularly to those who are not able to get here and whatnot. But feel free to get, drop me a line or give me a call if you wish to talk. I'm, I'm working this week on your behalf. And, and, um, and that's kind of uh, what, what we've got going right now more comments in this in the sermon. Um, uh, Mr. President, do you have uh, any messages for the good of the order? Yes, I do. Uh, first of all, thank you, Mark. Uh, it's been great having you as a as a leader and pastor for TLC. I, we had a nice, beautiful card for you. <laughs> we'll have to mail it to you. Um, but thank you very much. Um, this week, the council did meet with a uh, transition pastor, uh, Dana, that rhymes with banana, and she specifically picked on Sunny. So I thought she was perfect. <laughs> and uh, so uh, we'll be meeting with Lauren uh, later uh, this week, uh, who's also here, and she'll serve as our pastor next Sunday, um, which happens to be my birthday too. So. Oh my! Um, All right, <laughs> but uh, no, uh, we're we're moving forward. Everything's going good. Uh, Brian is now going to be the call committee chairperson, so uh, we are in uh, good spirits, and I think we're going in the right direction. So, you know, we're moving forward. And thank you, Pastor Mark. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate it. 
And uh, uh, Pastor Lauren, do you want to say anything uh, in the in our uh, intro here? Or? Surprise! Surprise! Uh, <laughs> hi, everybody. There she is. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wasn't planning to say anything, so you know, if you give the pla I give a pastor the floor, you never know what'll happen. So um, I'll just say you all have been blessed to have Pastor Fisher with you for all these years. Um, I know this isn't the way you wanted to say goodbye, uh, and it's hard to do it, especially on Zoom. But um, make sure you send them a note or a card or give them a call, and and Beth as well before they. Um, before they end their ministry there. And um, I will be with you next week, maybe like this, hopefully um, outside um, without rain and um, sweltering heat. And we'll look forward to, to moving you all forward. All right. Are there uh, any other messages for uh, the good of the order? It would appear that there are not, so let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you can provide enough for all. We abuse your creation for our own benefit. 
We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption when we cry, Abba, Father, is it that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God? And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not of its own will, but the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we, are saved, we were saved, now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the uh, Holy Gospel according to Matthew. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So that when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. And the slave said to him, then do you want us to go out and gather the weeds? But he replied, No, for gathering the weeds would, would uproot the wheat among them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first, bind them in bundles to be burned, and then gather the wheat to my barn. Then he led the crowds left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, 
explain to us this parable of the weeds of the field. And Jesus answered, You see, the one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, and the field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom, and the weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, there, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. But anyone with ears hear. The Gospel of the Lord. So, over the last several weeks, as we've been exploring Matthew's take on Jesus' ministry, we've, we've started by kind of looking at the complexity of life in Palestine at the time of Jesus, the challenges that his ministry would naturally have. We've looked at the political uh, challenges, the economic, the cultural, uh, the religious challenges. We've looked at the fact that even within all of these kinds of forces, uh, there are also challenges within the actual tribe or within the community itself, how the community will take all of these these uh, influences and contextualize them in yet a new and different way. And it's within all of this, Jesus explains to his disciples, that you must present shalom and recognize how shalom may be impacting all these various influences. And then last week, uh, we look at the fact that there is also the interior life of the individual by looking at the planting of seeds in good soil. Is, uh, is the soil prepared for those seeds? And the soil were meant to re reflect the people of that time. Are they prepared to receive that message? Are there other distractions in their midst conforming to rocky soil and this and that? And we recognize it's not just that easy to present shalom and to have it re be received and then to move forward accordingly. But Jesus today, he, he, he raises the bar again because even in good soil, even in soil that's prepared to receive the seed and the word, it's possible for weeds to grow. It's just not that easy. And we recognize that as the faith moves forward, as people earnestly try to take in compassion, mercy, justice, and forgiveness, and they feel that and they're moved by that, they still can be tripped up by various issues that confront them in the, their day-to-day -day life. It's not that simple to live out shalom. But Jesus gives us this framework. He gave the disciples this framework. He gives us this framework in 2020 to recognize it will be important for each of us as we walk our walk to uh, distinguish between what is influencing us and how that impacts our understanding of faith. We do not do faith in a vacuum. And so those weeds can come in and disturb the integrity of shalom and create almost a false sense of who, what God's hope is for humankind. But yet we have the capacity to distinguish between the two. It takes some effort. And in part, that may be fighting the good fight of faith. Well, as we are coming to an end of seven and a half years together, I dare say we have done a reasonably good job of fighting the fight of faith. Each step of the way, we have had an opportunity 
to explore God's hope for each of us and to move forward in new and exciting ways. And I, I dare say the first step was the fact that you even accepted me as your supply, uh, what we call a stated supply, right, Lauren? That's the term we use. I was given an opportunity uh, by you, even though I had a doctorate in ministry and I was a consultant and I'd done all kinds of stuff, uh, uh, you gave me an opportunity to begin to explore what it means to be a pastor. You saw something in me that said, yeah, let's give this old guy a chance. And you did. And after a while, uh, and you were in a call process and you thought, well, you know what, maybe Mark would be a good person to stick with us. And you asked me if I'd be willing to apply uh, for more of a permanent job. And I checked with the Senate. They said that'd be fine. And I became your minister. And we played around with different titles. We were, uh, we were having fun with it because I couldn't be called pastor. But, we, but in any event, you called me, you didn't call me, but you invited me to stay around. And I stayed around. But one of the conditions you made was that uh, I would have to uh, explore a route to ordination. And uh, I did. And, and that happened through Gettysburg. And you were with me every step of the way. You encouraged me. We explored various aspects of ministry together. We worked together. Uh, we, we did some good stuff, and we stumbled, and we, we had fun, though, I think, the whole time. That we, this is this opportunity, this unique opportunity to uh, actually give birth to a pastor in our very midst. And it happened. I was ordained. And uh, we continued to move forward. And we've done so much good work together. I, uh, I cannot put into words how grateful I am for each of you or how much I love each of you. It's a unique situation to pastor in the church you were ordained in. There is a relationship there that is different, and it's good. And I, uh, it's kind of a curious irony, I don't know if that's the right word, that I am leaving my spiritual home to pastor in my hometown. But that is, in essence, what is happening. And uh, I am so grateful, so very grateful to each of you. You have uh, helped, helped me a great deal. And I dare say, I think we would agree that it's been a good relationship. It's been reciprocal. It's worked. It's worked because we decided to work it. And uh, I think we've all grown. Now, we still have challenges ahead. We are still facing this COVID-19 thing. It's, it's still very real and it's challenging and it's frustrating and it's depressing at times. But yet we grow closer in new and unique ways through this crisis. I do believe we are growing stronger. And we're also faced, as I have preached for the last six weeks on the issue of race and the systemic race issue, racism issue. And, and, and we're, we're put into a, a, a context or a situation where we are being invited to, to learn more than we've ever known before about what the injustices are in our beloved country, still beloved. And we're invited to explore that as people of faith. And those things don't go away for you, they don't go away for me, or they don't go away for any of us. But there's incredible opportunity and there's a richness of shalom that can follow if we have the desire to continue to grow and to learn. Now you've been here before, you've gone through pastors before, you 
you, you understand how to, to do these kinds of things, and you're going to be guided greatly by Pastor Lauren and by the Senate and by your council as these things move forward. And I know that the gifts that you have are going to be um, reborn in a whole new way after I have left the building, so to speak. And I am excited for each of you uh, for that future and for that opportunity that is just within reach. And so I, uh, I don't know what else more to say other than to say that I know we have been good news. And that's how any sermon should end is with good news. And I'm looking at good news. I'm staring at it right now. My Hollywood square screen, you know. And uh, I know that uh, you now are my home church. So, uh, and soon I will simply be friend. And I will always be grateful that God gave each of us this opportunity to walk with him together. Amen. Let us boldly proclaim what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now is a time in our service where we uh, share our joys and concerns with each other. Who has a joy and or a concern to share? Yes, Beth has something to share. 
Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody that it's been a joy um, that Mark and I have gotten to know all of you and that you've welcomed us into your lives and your hearts and have let us be a part of your TLC family. Um, I will forever be grateful and thankful to all of you and will always hold you in prayer. Thank you. Yeah, Pastor. Yes. Can you hear? Uh, prayers for Al Carr, who's suffering heart failure, and uh -huh. for my uh, uh, my son's uh, wife's grandmother, who is in her last stages of hospice. Mm -hmm. Mary Mary Ellen Reese. Okay, Eric. Thank you. Are there other? Me, Mark? Yes. Um, as you mentioned with my father, so my pr father and your prayers. Also, the joy this week, this Wednesday, Ricky and I will be celebrating our 15th anniversary together, which he, you can see is not with us today. He is helping another person with something today. But, um, I'd especially like to now. If everybody doesn't mind, I'd like to take a time just to say a prayer for Mark and Beth. Uh, okay. If you, you will bow your heads, and I will try to do this the best I can. Heavenly Father, we thankful. We are thankful for your servants, Mark and Beth. We thank you for everything they have brought forth to TLC and the growth of the congregation in more ways than one. They leave us with tears of joy, tears of sadness as they depart, but we just continue to uplift them, that they will continue to grow in your light, that they can continue their ministry at St. John's. Thank you so much for these this couple, Lord, and bless them in every each way. And this we give you all the praise and thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? If there is not, we will commit all of this to the prayers of the church. confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit. We pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness. There are witness may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, we see our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Lord, in your mercy, we see our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, we see that prayer. prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair and all who suffer in any way, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Our prayer. 
God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the safety of those who travel. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy. God of life, for those who have died in you, shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints close to us. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our Receive prayer. prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now is the time in the service where we normally take an offering, and we're not really doing that, but uh, kindly ask you to continue your support. We are grateful uh, for the continued support and uh, that this ministry keeps on uh, moving forward. And, uh, and that is a good thing. Uh, now, um, a point of order. If we had been uh, outdoors today, uh, we would have done the Thanksgiving of the words. Kathy, I want to make sure you hear this too. We are going to be doing communion this morning, which I think you knew if we were going to Zoom. So uh, I will, we will do communion, and, uh, um, and then I will simply conclude with the blessing, and then we'll move on to our uh, closing song. And uh, I think that that's where we are at. So um, let, us, uh, let us begin. On the night uh, our Lord was turned over, he gathered his disciples in an upper room in downtown Jerusalem. He washed their feet. He talked with them. He shared with them. He counseled them. He recognized their anxiety in the midst of the turbulence of the time. And then he took bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat. This is my body, given for you. And then he took the cup, and he said, this cup is my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this, and remember me. We know that with the cup and with the bread, we draw closer to Jesus Christ. And so together, let us pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, Father, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from us. Thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now that we uh, have received the sacrament, may God bless us with discomfort at easy answers and half-truths so that we may live deep into our hearts. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, 
and exploitation of people so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless us with enough hope to believe that through Christ we can make a difference in this world. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.